Welcome to the Mobile Midwife and Mobile Lactation Consultant Insurance Claims Tutorial Video. This video is designed to help you begin submitting insurance claims to your payer. To begin in submitting in an insurance claim, first you'll want to open up a client record. And then you'll want to go to the lower right hand corner where you see tasks and billing. And then press insurance claims on the left hand side. From here you can press add claim in the upper right hand corner and choose to add either a professional or institutional claim. Both of these claims are very similar and so today we're only going to cover the professional claim. The institutional claim is something you would use if you need to bill for facility fees. For instance if you have a birth center and you need to bill for the birth center fee to the payer you would use an institutional claim and then you'd use the professional claim to bill for the midwifery services. So once you press add professional claim, a new professional claim form will appear. The first field is the date time field, which is simply there to indicate the time you created this claim. The second field is the claim type. You can choose paper or electronic. In this case, we're going to choose paper. However, electronic is very similar. In fact, it's identically the same in every way other than at the bottom, you get to choose to e-submit the claim instead of print the claim. The paper claim feature is, is free and included with all of our plans. However, the electronic claim feature does come in an added fee. If you're interested in submitting electronic claims, give us a call or email us at any time and we can set your account up to provide that functionality. Once you choose the claim type, then you'll want to choose the payer. When you tap on the payer option, you'll see at least one insurance plan and subscriber ID to choose from if it was set up accordingly in the financial information section of the client intake. The financial information section of the client intake is something the client will typically fill out when they visit the client portal and they'll choose the payer and put in their subscriber ID. They'll choose whether they're a dependent and who the primary policyholder is. Then you want to choose the provider. The pro provider is the individual who provided the services to the patient and this is important because this is where the MPI will be pulled from. The MPI for a user is set under the Settings Users tab, as well as their federal tax ID. And those two pieces of information are essential and they're used to populate the claim when it is generated. If you do not populate the MPI under the user, it'll trigger a message requesting that you do so when you go to print the claim. Next you can choose whether the claim is for mom or for baby. If you choose for baby, then the baby's information will be pulled and populated into the claim. If the baby hasn't been born yet, and this is a, a midwifery related claim, then you'll get an error message saying that the baby's date of birth information is not available and that the claim cannot be generated. In this case, we're going to leave it with mom. Next, we're going to choose a diagnosis code. We'll choose supervision of high risk pregnancy. Next, we'll choose our procedure code. In this case, we're going to choose the global OB care and a birth to rental. We want to set the date of service. So typically this would be set to the date of the birth. Then you want to choose the place of service. In this case, we'll choose home, assuming this was a home birth. Then we want to choose our diagnosis code. We, have, we only have one option in here because we only added one diagnosis code above. 
So we'll choose that. And we'll add a fee for the birth rental, the tub birth rental. Optionally, we can choose to copy the codes from a visit record. Once we press save, the claim total will be calculated for us. And then we are pretty much done with the claim under most circumstances. In some cases, you'll want to drill into the set additional info section and choose some of these additional options, such as the include LMP option. By default, we don't include the LMP, as most payers do not require it. However, if you submit your claim and then the payer rejects the claim because they request that you include the LMP, you can come back in here and choose the LMP to be included and then reprint and, and mail the claim. So the next step then is to press print claim. And fortunately, there were no errors here. In some cases, again, if you haven't set the NPI or the federal tax ID, then it will ask you to do that at this time. Then we can go into the submission history, and we can see the claim that was generated. There's a little thumbnail here, which we can tap on. And once we tap on that thumbnail, it will open the claim that was generated. And from here, we can see everything that was populated into the claim form. We can verify that it's all accurate and make any customizations we, we like. We may decide to go back to the professional claim form that we were just on, make some changes, and then re regenerate it. Or we can make changes directly into the form here. For instance, some payers may prefer not to see that you've you got the signature on file, but would rather actually see the real signature. And in that case, we can do that all from within this screen. Then we can choose to print the super bill, at which point the system will ask us to load our printer with the CMS 1500 form paper. This is special paper that you can buy from Amazon or from a myriad of places online and load it into your printer and then print on it and then the resultant form will have the black text from the app printed on it onto the red background. And at that point you can either fold it up and put it in a normal envelope and mail it to the payer or you can purchase special CMS envelopes and put it in the, the envelopes and mail it that way. Again, this is just dependent on how you like to do things, and in some cases, the payer may require that you use sp the special CMS form paper and envelope. Another option is to print directly onto blank white paper. And this can be done by pressing on the share icon in the upper right corner and choosing print. In this case, it'll print both the text and the background color. If you have a black and white only printer, then it'll just print the, a black background instead of the red standardized CMS 1500 uh, color. Again, that just depends on whether your payer requires that or not. If you print it on the CMS 1500 form, and everything's and, and you notice that things are not aligned properly, then you'll have to go to the alignment section in, in the app and align your printer with the app. And we'll cover that once we finish this claim. So once you finish printing and you've mailed it, you can go back to the claim status and set it to mailed claim to payer. And then once you receive a response from the payer, for instance, maybe the payer denied the claim. And maybe they denied it because 
the diagnosis code was unacceptable. At that point, you may call the payer and ask them why the diagnosis code was unacceptable, and they may tell you that the diagnosis code wasn't specific enough. So in that case, you would go to your diagnosis codes and you would delete your diagnosis code and add it again. And you may decide that you don't want to use one of the diagnosis codes in your favorites. Instead, you'll scroll to the bottom to where the entire database of diagnosis codes is accessible. And you can drill into the appropriate section and choose as specific as possible. So in this case, we'll choose supervision of pregnancy with history of infertility third trimester. We'll want to then go to our procedure code and reselect that diagnosis code, otherwise it'll still have the old diagnosis code in there. And then we can print the claim again. After we print the claim, we can go into the submission history, tap on the thumbnail again, and then print it through our printer onto the CMS 1500 paper or onto a blank sheet of paper. Then hopefully the next time the payer will respond with a, with a check, at which point you can mark the claim as paid, record the payment date, the payment amount, set the entire claim to paid status, and record your total payments. And then you're done. That claim is complete. You may also record the payment under the client's billing section. So the next thing we're going to cover is how to view all your claims at the practice level. At the practice level, there's a claim summary tab underneath the task and billing section, which will show you all your claims and their statuses. This will give you a convenient snapshot to see all your outstanding claims and any claims that are paid or denied so that nothing falls through the cracks. Also under this section, you can go under the insurance settings and set your federal tax ID, which is used for institutional claims. For professional claims, the federal tax ID is pulled from the provider's user record. This is also the spot where we mentioned earlier where you can align your CMS 1500 form with your printer. And to do that, you'll tap on this button and then you'll load your CMS 1500 stock into your printer and you'll print it and then you'll record which letters show up in these special boxes and the system will then align the app with your printer. The facilities tab is a spot where you can add any facilities that you want to bill for institutional claims. So if you have several birth centers that you deliver babies at, you would want to add them here with their name, MPI, and address and then this information will be pulled when institutional claims are generated if this facility is selected. Lastly, there are some reports in the reports section, which we're not going to cover, but are very intuitive, that you can use to generate a history of all the claim payments. And so that concludes this tutorial. If you have any further questions, feel free to give us a call or email us. We can even perform a demo for your practice and help you step through creating a claim. 
And again, if you would like to submit electronic claims, you can also contact us and we can set that up for you. Again, there is an additional fee for electronic claims, so please contact us to get more information about that. Thank you for listening to our tutorial and have a great day.